All righty. I see some participants coming in. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Getting Started webinar for this year's San Diego Gives. Um, we have a bunch of participants joining today, so I'm just going to give it a couple seconds um, so everyone can get in. For those of you who are joining us, we would love to know who you are, what organization you're representing. Um, so while you're kind of joining, if you can just click the little chat button and let us know um, who you are and your organization, and then we'll get started in a minute. Awesome, I love seeing all of those come in. So if you are just joining us, um, we are about to get started, but we're having everyone just let us know who they are and what organization they're with, um, and we'll get started. Um, okay, so just a few quick housekeeping items to note before we jump in. I wanna let you all know that this webinar is going to be recorded and we're gonna post um, the webinar in the nonprofit toolkit on the San Diego Give site under the resources tab. Um, if you have any questions that come up during the presentation, you can use the little Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to just send us those uh, and we'll get to them. Um, Lauren is here with us and she's going to help kind of go through those questions uh, during the presentation as well. So let's get started. Um, this is, uh, I'm Sarah. I'm going to start my video and just wave hello. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, so I uh, would love to just welcome you all. I'm a project manager with Mighty Cause. We're the platform provider for San Diego Gives. Uh, we also have Lauren joining us today from the San Diego Gives team. So I'm just going to pass the mic over to Lauren so you can say a couple words. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see 65 of you. And I know more will come, as well as the multiple people who sent messages like, hey, I can't make it. Is it going to be recorded? And as to Sarah's point, it will be which is also great even if you're here today to then go back and, and relook at it. And I've been pushing people to this webinar because the questions right now, right? We just did, uh, we just closed out registrations. So the questions are like, yeah, like now what? What do, I, what do I do now? And so that's the goal today is to get, alleviate some of that stress or confusion or uh, concern about how to get started. Um, just grateful for everybody here. Last year we had, you know, the first year had 120 nonprofits. This year we were hoping for 250. We over exceeded that by 25% at 327. And I think I just like pinch myself. It's silly to say, but I like pinch myself every day that this thought of could we do something like this is now this big with this much sponsors and match money and this many nonprofits. And so just really happy to be on the journey with everybody, happy to answer questions. I like that <clears throat> Sarah put the two emails that I push all the time, which is support at Mighty Cause for Mighty Cause questions. And then info at San Diego Gives for our San Diego Gives questions. Um, and with that, yeah, I'll be help. So sorry, I have a sick child in the background. I will um, be here to help with questions. And um, thanks so much, Sarah. Awesome. Um, so we are just super excited to be here with you all for San Diego Gives this year again. Um, a brief overview of Mighty Calls if you're brand new and you're wondering who the partner is. Um, we are a fully functional organization fundraising suite that organizations can use every day of the year to raise money for their causes. Um, we've been around since 2006. We were one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So we're just super excited to be involved with San Diego Gives again this year and looking forward to helping you all out. Alrighty, so our agenda here is a look. We'll be going over some of the basics for the event. Um, then we're going to walk through how to customize your organization page on the platform. Uh, at that point, I'm going to provide you a full-on demo walkthrough, which is kind of why my camera's off, so you don't have to see my face tucked into this laptop. Um, but then we'll have a full Q&A session at the end if there's any remaining questions. So if you do have a question while I'm presenting, you can type them into the Q&A button on your Zoom dashboard. So to start with, so you can hear Lauren's beautiful voice one more time, I'm going to have her cover the basics. 
<clears throat> that was very sweet, Sarah. Uh, I feel like I'm coming down with something too, so it might not be so sweet for much longer, but yeah, so just uh, some basic information. And two, if you missed the intro to San Diego Gives webinar, it's also in the nonprofit toolkit on the website. I'll throw that link in the chat here in a minute, but um, website, of course, is sandiogives.org. Uh, Senio Gives was started by um, a group of 12 nonprofits that just, and if you haven't heard the story, I mean, it just started at a fundraising Friday call where the question was, can we do this? Is this something that people do? Can we locally have a day of giving for San Diego? And I pretty much just said, anyone who's interested, let me know. We scheduled a call. Everyone was on board and everyone, you know, we grabbed jobs and the volunteer kind of steering committee took off from there. Uh, San Diego Gives was built from the belief that we have a philanthropic community already that just needs to be informed and directed. Uh, and the day is scheduled for the second Thursday of September. So if you're a planner, you can pop the date for 2013 already on your calendar. Like I said earlier, we have 327 nonprofits participating, it takes place on September 8th, the whole day from midnight to midnight. But before that, we have early giving that starts July 16th, which is San Diego's birthday. So the idea and more information will be to come out to everybody is that <clears throat> you can start giving July 16th and run it all the way to the end of the day on the 8th. And that kind of the marketing ploy on July 16th is that you're kind of giving gifts to San Diego, right? In lieu of a, a Lego kit, I don't know. <laughs> you're giving gifts to San Diego nonprofits to support uh, San Diego. So thanks, Sarah. Awesome. Um, okay, so for those who are brand new, first time participants, maybe you haven't participated in a giving day before. Um, a giving day is an online fundraising marathon. It's aiming to bring people together to support a specific community cause or space. Um, so the giving day host, in this case, San Diego Gives, they organize the event, they rally through the organizations to raise funds for your causes. Um, the organizations that participate are going to utilize the resources and the tools that are provided by the host to reach out to your supporters um, to solicit kind of donations, secure fundraisers, and just really work on expanding and growing your network, whether that's, you know, securing more volunteers, securing more uh, donors, all sorts of goals can go into your giving day. They don't have to necessarily just be monetary. Um, and we'll cover more of that kind of strategy and thinking behind giving days in our next webinar. Um, but as far as how giving days work, just as we noted, a giving day is a unique campaign. It's presented by our host. Um, it provides participants the opportunity to really capitalize on the urgency of a limited time frame. So in this case, you have your 24 hours to raise the most money for your cause. Um, giving days are a super exciting way for you to engage sponsors, maybe secure new sponsors, um, your community partners, and create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to help spread the word about your organization and your mission and to really raise funds for your cause. Um, the limited time frame creates a real, you know, super sense of urgency that donors are going to tend to respond to, um, especially with how you structure your campaign and the goals and the mini goals that you set during the day. Those will all help you provide fresh messaging opportunities for your donors. As far as what you need to do um, to participate, of course, you'll have already registered, um, but then you're going to start to need to customize your profile on the San Diego Give site, and you'll start planning for your campaign. Um, once your page is set up, you can start to invite people involved with your organization to participate as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers um, to really kind of expand the net that you're throwing out. Um, once early giving has started on the 16th, you can really start promoting your campaign, encouraging donations. Uh, and of course, you'll definitely want to push, you know, your biggest donation ask on the actual giving day, September 8th. So we're going to be going over what the San Diego Gives website looks like, um, reviewing kind of how to log in. Uh, and then I'm going to give you an overview, kind of just a full on walkthrough tutorial uh, of how to edit and navigate different areas of your organization's uh, page. So I'm going to stop screen share and pull up my um, example page. Hold on one second. All righty. Um, cool. Can everyone see it? Lauren, are you seeing the San Diego Games website? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, all righty. So getting started. 
Um, to navigate first, so you've registered, um, you've claimed your organization if you're new. To navigate to your organization dashboard, you're going to head to the San Diego Gives Org site. You're going to click on the user icon, the little login button at the top right. Um, uh, from this point, you can log in using Google. Facebook is unfortunately down at the moment, but you usually can use Facebook uh, and Google or just the email that is associated to your account. Um, if you forgot your login, you can enter your email address if you know it and click forgot password. If you have absolutely no idea or you forgot what email address you used, you can just reach out to our support team, support at mightycause.com, um, and they can help give you some assistance and let you know uh, what email you have. Um, but once you're logged in, um, I am not going to log in, but once you log in, uh, you'll have a drop down menu and you can select the organization page that you are associated to. Um, and from there, it'll pop you over to your organization overview screen. Um, and that is what this will look like. So it'll come up with um, kind of like a little walkthrough mini tutorial that you can work through if you're brand new. I'm going to exit out of that for now. Um, once you're on this screen, this is your overview page. It has all of your metrics, um, all of the information that is going to be really useful for you to promote during the giving events. Um, if you want to tell people how many donations you have during the day or how many uh, dollars raised you have, everything like that is here and it's totally customizable. You can change what that looks like. Um, you are also going to see that you're registered for San Diego Gives right here. Um, and then you'll see a to do list right here. These are things that we recommend that you do set up EFT complete organization page, pretty much just a quick getting started. This is what you definitely need probably to have the most successful giving day. Um, we always recommend EFT set up just because EFT you'll get your money quicker after the giving day is over. Um, alrighty. So working down through the dashboard, you have your organization page. Um, this is where your page, we also have a lovely tutorial here for you. Um, but this is your organization page. You'll find uh, this is what all the donors, all the people who are visiting your profile are going to see. So we'll get kind of deeper into all of the capabilities and the editing that is available to you here in a minute. Um, moving down your dashboard, um, we have, you know, supporters, we have fundraising tools that we're going to get into. Um, this is where you can see any peer to peer fundraisers that have been created for your organization. You'll find matching grants here, uh, which we'll show a little bit in a minute. Um, as we move down the dashboard, you'll see reports. This section is where you can preview and export different donation reports. Um, you'll find your donor retention report if you participated in the event last year, which is going to be a really great tool for you this year. Um, continuing down, we have checkout. Here you can customize your donation form, um, your thank you page, and your donation receipt. As we continue to travel, you'll also see settings. Um, this is where you can add additional admins to your account if you have multiple people who are going to be needing access to your page. Um, you can also edit different things within these settings, um, like the URL that's attached to your page um, and your social share settings, which will be something that you'll want to do as well. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. But now that we have completed, admin tools is something that I have, but you all won't. Um, so we'll go back to the organization page. This will keep popping up for me since I'm in a demo site. Um, so just bear with me on that. Uh, okay, so we're going to get into the organization page customization. This is the face of your organization for the um, giving day. So you're going to want to make sure it looks good and represents your organization well. Uh, you are going to be able to toggle on and off edit mode so you can see exactly what the visitors to your page will see. We're really excited at Mighty Cause to be able to have all on page editing so you can see exactly what sections are editable because they have these little icons. Um, toggling off edit mode, this is exactly what a donor or a visitor coming to your page will see so you can kind of see it in real time and know what you want it to look like. Um, Alrighty, and then just FYI, so everyone knows, um, this URL up in the top 
is the address to direct people to your page for San Diego Gives. So if you have an email newsletter that goes out or you need a link for Facebook, you can add, you can, you'll just highlight, copy paste this URL. Um, you'll know that you have the right URL because it'll say, instead of your giving day, it'll say San Diego Gives.org. So you'll know that you have the right URL. Um, Alrighty, so first things first, when you are editing your organization page, um, you are going to want to update your logo. So you'll just click the little pencil icon to open up that section for editing. Um, logos are going to have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio to be able to fit. So logos on Mighty Cause are pretty much the same ratio as most of our other social media sites. So if you have a logo on your Facebook or your Twitter, Instagram, you can use the same logo here as well. Um, just a note, we always like to tell people, make sure your logo and doesn't clash, well, I guess I should say your background doesn't clash with your logo. Um, so once you edit your logo, you will want to move on to your background image. Um, your background image will look best if it's mostly, of course, probably text free, uh, a strong image that represents your organization. Landscape, of course, is going to work best. The ratio, if you are interested in ratios or you have a designer who's helping you out on your team, is a three to one aspect ratio. Um, and I'll click in there in a second to show you, but we also offer a generic gallery of images that you can choose from if you don't have an image that you want to use and you just want to use a placeholder. Um, so you can just change your banner image. Uh, you can kind of see how you can drag and drop and change. This is where you'll find gallery of kind of just generic images, text-free, nice ones that you can use if you if you don't have the time. It really comes down to what time you have. Um, Alrighty, so you're going to want to customize your page to match your brand, like I said. You can change your theme color to match your organization's branding if you have a, a specific color, uh, blue or orange, whatever color works with your organization. Um, your theme color, uh, Basically, the theme color picker allows you to pick just a consistent color that shows throughout the experience. Your organization kind of provides your uh, supporters, so it's all kind of streamlined. Super easy to set. You just are going to click the palette icon on the background image. It'll open up that section for editing, um, and you can choose if you have a hex code. Like I said, if you have like a designer who works with you all and they have a hex code, you can paste that in there. Um, and that's where you're going to see like the change in color and buttons and stuff. Um, below your organization profile name, you are going to have uh, your donate button and your fundraise button. Donate is, of course, where people are going to click to make donations. The fundraise button is where your supporters can click to create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your page. Um, and if you, you can also toggle off the fundraise button if you do not want any peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. You can just click this little megaphone, toggle off fundraise, uh, and keep just the donate button. Um, but I definitely recommend kind of leaving it up and uh, getting people to peer-to-peer -peer fundraise for you, which we'll cover more in the next webinar. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is really, like I said, going to cast your net uh, a little further. You can connect and reach people who may have not already be in your circle of donors. So I definitely recommend um, trying to get some peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers during the event. Um, alrighty, so as we move further down, um, you can also update your metrics, like adding a goal for the giving day or enabling a progress bar on your page. So as you can see here, um, uh, I forgot to mention this. This is where people will come to share your organization on socials. They can click that. Um, but this is your uh, metrics kind of bar. You can decide to show amount raised, number of donors, include offline donations. You can also set to start calculation on a specific date. So you could set your start date uh, to coincide with early giving. So everyone can see how much you've made and that number will be reflected uh, for the period of the giving event. Um, and then of course you can edit your goal for the event, however much uh, you want it to reflect. If you meet your goal, um, you can also edit your goal to go further. So don't let your goal stop you. We do get questions like that from some organizations who have met their goal. Um, open it up, extend your goal, and just keep, keep fundraising. <laughs> um, okay, so scrolling down is your story or your about section as we've labeled it. This is really the centerpiece of your page. 
So in your story, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos and video. Um, I really just want to highlight this section because this is your chance to explain what your organization is all about. Um, it's an opportunity to really review your page if you participated last year uh, and think about the message you want to share with donors during the event this year if you've already participated. Um, are you campaigning for something different based off of what happened during last year's event? Do you have any different goals? Um, so definitely take some time and update the message that you want people to see because this is the first thing they'll see um, when they land on your page. Um, the text editor is right in this section, so literally all you have to do is just click into the section and make your edits. Um, so you can just say whatever you need to. Um, you can add video like it shows. These will be links that are embedded. So if you do have video, you'll need to upload it to YouTube or to Vimeo. And then you can copy the URL um, and you can insert video uh, in that way. And then of course, you'll just click save um, once you're done making any edits. Um, da, 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 what did I forget? Um, yep, custom tabs. Okay, so one super cool piece uh, is the ability for your profile to add up to three additional custom tabs. So you can add anything you'd like to your custom tab, um, info about any upcoming events, uh, specific kind of details in a campaign that you might be running, um, frequently asked questions, info about your staff, acknowledgements, just anything you want, just to kind of keep everything organized and super easy to find. Um, below this section is the media galleries. We also have featured campaigns. So if there's a campaign that you're running and you want it to kind of be highlighted, you can add it here, delete an old campaign here. It's super intuitive. Um, you can also see all the campaigns that are supporting your organization. So like I was saying, when people come here to fundraise for you, you can see the campaigns that are supporting you. Um, and then, of course, you can add media, Instagram, you can connect your Facebook gallery um, and all sorts of stuff like that. This is the kind of the info that will be on your page. If you have an email address, social media, you can edit that as well. Um, do we have any questions on that so far, Lauren? There are a few questions uh, in the chat. Sarah, one was just the logo ratio was three to one, correct? Um, logo is one to one, banner oh. is three to one. Okay, that's what I heard. Um, and then <clears throat> for videos, they asked if it plays on your page or does it take you somewhere else? It plays on the page, correct? It'll play on the page. Mm -hmm. And then is there a word limit for the about section? Um, that is a good question. I don't know off the, here it is. Yep. 5,000. And then the last question was about creating a featured campaign separately, or can they give directly to the organization page and they can give to either or, correct? Mm -hmm, yep. Um, I'd say most organizations are probably fundraising, um, on directly on their organization page. This is kind of like general fund fundraising. Um, if you have like super specific campaigns, like you're trying to, have a specific campaign to like buy a, a new location for your organization, that might be something uh, that you want to dedicate a featured campaign. But I would say for the most part, people are campaigning uh, typically on, directly on their profile pages. And I know for last year, <clears throat> those who participated last year said that, because we've asked the question of like, oh, where did you get most of your donations to a specific campaign or to your page? And it was like half and half. So, mm, interesting. Yeah, there, I don't know that the, people like live and die on it's on the page and other people are like, oh my gosh, it's only because. Yeah, can't. yeah, true. So. <laughs> That's very um, true. Those are all the questions so far. Okay, cool. So I will keep going. Thank you. Um, Alrighty, so uh, definitely make sure you spend some time just customizing your organization page. Honestly, the more work you put into it, the better it looks, the better kind of success you'll have during the giving event. Um, so definitely take some time. Um, let's see what I have next on my list to show you. Um, alrighty, so we're going to go to the side panel, uh, the dashboard, um, and under settings, general settings, I'm going to show you where you can edit uh, your social settings. So right here is your social sharing, and this is all customizable. You can basically just standardize the social template that you have on your page whenever someone clicks that share uh, organization page um, button. So when someone shares a link on Facebook or Twitter, this is the image and the description that is going to automatically appear. 
You can set your logo here as well. Um, add a blurb, add some hashtags that are going to populate whenever a supporter spreads the word about you. Um, so yeah, so just take some time to fill out this little social sharing section as well. Um, all right, so we're going to go over to check out Flow. I'm going to bop around a little bit. Um, so the next item you're going to want to customize is your organization's checkout flow and your donation form. So this is located within the checkout section, uh, like I said, the left hand side of your dashboard. The checkout flow is literally the donor experience that they're going to see when they make a donation and are checking out um, for your organization. This is probably one of the most important features to focus on when you're setting up your organization's page, uh, just because there's so much, uh, we give you so much control over kind of how it's structured. I will click it so you know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so this is what the donate page looks like. Um, you can set up custom suggested donation amounts, which is wonderful. You can add descriptions to help tie those amounts to items or services that your organization provides. Um, so for our examples here, $40 funds 10 pounds of dog food, $100 helps fund transport. These descriptions are really going to help strengthen your appeal to donors to give um, because donors, I mean, just as any person likes to have an idea of what their dollars are able to cover. Um, these are also particularly helpful because each one of these different amounts might strike someone's interest. Someone who may be coming to your page to give $20 might see, oh, well, if I give $30, I can vaccinate two rescue dogs. So it kind of goes a little further to show people what they can do with their dollars. Um, we also have the option for one-time donations, monthly donations. Um, if you do not want to show monthly donations, you can hide the recurring option. Uh, as well. Um, alrighty, so within this donation form, you can also opt into collecting any additional info you might need. Um, Mighty Calls is automatically going to collect the emails and the addresses for the donors uh, so that you have that, but you also have the ability to add one additional question to your form. Um, at the top of the donation form, you can, when you're ready to edit, you are going to do the same thing just on your profile page. You can toggle on and off edit mode so you can see exactly what the form is going to look like if you were a donor. Um, anything not filled out is going to be hidden. So this add a section, add a designation kind of thing, uh, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Um, if you also want to share a direct donate link, so if you want to add a donate button to a email that's going out to supporters, you can just copy your direct donate button link um, and add that into an email or a newsletter or a Facebook post. Um, okay, cool. So let's see, I don't see anything in chat or questions, so I'm going to keep going. Um, back to the checkout flow, we're going to check out the thank you page. Um, so the thank you page within this section is where you're going to want to know, go to obviously set up your thank you page. It uses the same text editor as the about and story area. Um, you can add text, links, video, images. You can also add a custom um, call to action button, uh, which is really nice. You can link it to whatever you need. Um, if you want someone to sign up for an email newsletter list, or if you want to direct them to a social media site, whatever you would like, you can add that button. Um, this is a really, you're definitely going to want to fill out the thank you page. Um, just spend some time thinking about how you're, you thank them, however that is. Adding a photo of your staff would be really nice. There's a lot that you can do in this section. Um, back to the checkout, we'll go to the donation receipt. Um, you can customize your organization's donation receipt. Um, this customization that you see is going to appear within the tax deductible donation receipt that gets sent out after a donor uh, completes their donation on the site to you. Um, Mighty Cause automatically sends receipts, so you do not have to send receipts. If somebody emails you and says that they didn't get a receipt or that they need another receipt, you can just reach out to our support team and we will send uh, an additional receipt to them. Um, donors also have access to all of their donation uh, kind of receipts within their own account, but um, obviously you don't have to tell them that. If they are confused, uh, they can just, you can email support and just say, hey, my donor so-and-so needs a receipt and we will get it out to them. Um, 
But yeah, so uh, let's see what else is next on my list. I see a couple of questions. Let, just let me know, Lauren, if anything comes through. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, real, real quick. I did, um, Colleen had asked about how monthly giving works, and I just explained that the monthly donation would continually, would continue to go through month, uh, ugh, sorry, mighty good. October, November, et cetera, you would get an email that says, hey, you have this monthly donation that would either be deposited, if that's the way you set it up, or mailed. Um, so these will all be online. Right. I'm so the check that they would receive in the mail for, because you can either set up direct deposits. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, if people are continuing to donate, um, you'll get a disbursement. You'll fall into the regular Mighty Cause disbursement cycle, which is twice a month if you have EFT, once a month if you sign up for check. Uh, and then do receipts slash thank you emails come directly from Mighty Cause or does it have a reply to our org email? Uh, it'll come from Mighty Cause. Replies well, should go to our support. Mm. Um, will the donation be to Mighty Cause? Um, I, sorry, is it a donor clarify? advice fund? No. Sorry, say that again. Uh, it says, will the donation be to Mighty Cause, i.e., is it a donor advised fund? Uh, Mighty Cause is, the Charitable Foundation is a donor advised fund. That's a good question. Um, but it'll be dispersed to the organization. To yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the fee associated with each donation, I know it's different for each. I don't know. I can pull it if you don't have it offhand. I don't have it offhand. I'll pull it here. and I can pull it off the website here in just a second because I know it's different for every giving day. Um, mm -hmm. And then last question is, can you share any of the most successful, sorry, any of the most successful organizations from 2021 and how much they raised. I, um, we are doing a webinar here. I feel like that's all we talk about. Like, oh, there's a webinar. Coming. Yeah. <laughs> but we're doing one about kind of the top 10 successes of last year. We also have a leaderboard, which I need to, the leaderboard from 2021, I need to screenshot it and throw it on the website. But Scott, I'll, I'll do that. That was it right now. Okay, cool. Perfect. Thanks. Um, already, that gave me a minute to drink my tea, so I appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to move into the reports section of your dashboard. Um, this is going to be all that crucial data as we've written here. Um, so basically, as you can see, it's divided into five different areas, um, donations, offline donations, recurring donations, retention, and disbursement. Um, your donation report will be available to you in real time. So as someone makes a donation, you'll have access to that here. Um, you'll be able to see the donor name, the email, the donation amount. Uh, you'll also know what page they donated to. If they donated to a, it'll show the campaign, the campaign type. Um, so if there's a fundraiser or uh, directly to your organization profile, it'll be listed. Um, on your donation report, you can also click to download your report, um, and the downloaded report will include all that extra info that you don't see on this little snippet. Um, if there's designations or dedications, um, excuse me, I drank tea and now I'm burping, um, the gross and net amount of a donation, any additional info you set up to collect during the checkout flow if you had an additional question. Um, just note that the report automatically will display donations from only the last 30 days. So don't freak out if you don't see all your donations, you're going to need to edit and uh, click a custom date range, um, which you can set for a year. So if you next year, when you participate again, you'll have three years, you can only show a year at a time. So you'll have to download multiple reports. Um, another great thing is the campaign type. So you can view specifically by a giving event which makes sense because you're participating in San Diego Gives. Um, so you'll see San Diego Gives 2021, uh, and then you'll see San Diego Gives 2022. So you can download the full report from the giving event, um, which is really great. Uh, moving into reports, uh, where was I? Um, retention. Uh, so retention is going to be a really great uh, tool for you if this is your second year participating in San Diego Gives. Um, this section allows you to export your list of unretained donors and you can send individual emails uh, and much more at the top. You are going to be able to filter and create the type of retention report you need. Through status, you can filter your report to show retained or not retained donors. So here you go, retained, not retained. Um, you can select the time period. 
Um, so you can see specifically, uh, you can pick the time period and the event from last year and show everyone who was not retained. And those are going to be key people you're going to want to reach, reach kind of include in your strategy. Blah, blah, include in your strategy to reach out to uh, because these people gave to your campaign last year. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back over to reports and I'm going to show you offline donations. Um, of course, one of the most important aspects of online fundraising is still being able to track and manage um, your offline donations and the fundraising success that you have outside of the platform itself. So you can add your offline donations. Um, to add a donation, you will select add offline donation. Um, I'll click it so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then, so when you're adding the online offline donation, you just will enter any key info, such as a donor name, email address, the source, if it was cash, check, um, a match or something. Uh, at the top of your offline donations report, you can search for a particular offline donation. Uh, if you know the donor's name and you need to get clarification or whatever it is, um, so the only thing to note is that once you have entered an offline donation, you cannot edit the donation, which is fine. You just will need to delete it and create a new one if you uh, found an error or need to correct something. Um, alrighty, I see, I see seven chat bubbles at the bottom. <laughs> Let me see. Are you talking about? <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. Okay. No, you're fine. I keep looking at it and I'm like, oh, we have questions, but I know you're you're also answering, so I'll just keep going. Well, it's just the, the person that asked about the donor advice fund, Deborah said, the reason I ask about whether it is a donor advice fund is that the receipt will be to the for a donation to them, not to your organization for 990s. The donation gets reported from one donor as mighty cause. For example, that's how Network for Good does it. Um, sorry, I might have to read that one. I, I, I believe it's just, I mean, the donations, each donation is listed as that person who donated it. I, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. but um, there's another question mm -hmm. that says, uh, we'll receive donations as they come in. So like for early giving as soon as July, yes. Yeah, so yes. you get it, you get it in that two week window or, you know, right after that two week window that you received it. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like there's a question that just came through. Do folks who had a match get more traction last year? Um, I think, so one of the things we're doing this year is actual like whole campaign matches, which we're looking at about $50,000 in campaign matches throughout the day or early giving through, hopefully more than that would be ideal, but we're still, you know, any sponsors we get now will go into that pot for uh, additional matches. So again, if you have a sponsor, great, let us know. Um, um, that is a really good question. <clears throat> I don't, I didn't hear of anything specific outside of the fact that you, right, if you go to the page uh, and you can, <clears throat> I'm sure, I don't know if she'll show this today, but there's like that find your cause where I think there's a button that says include organizations mm -hmm. yep. that have matches. So yeah. Yep. So donors, they'll be able to search um, if organizations like search to see who has matches live. Um, we also on the main site will have a tab at the top that says matches. Um, so there's a little bit more visibility there as well. If if you have the time and ability to secure a match, I always think matches are good to have. Um, they give you something to talk about, to share with your donors. Um, if you find that your campaign maybe is slowing down, um, you can kind of uh, time your match during slower periods. To, to try to boost some more activity to your campaign. So if like, you know, dinner time is slow for you, five to six, you might wanna kind of create a match yeah. during that time um, so that people can see it and they, it drives like a little bit more momentum. They're like, oh, there's a match right now. If I do this, I can double my donation or however you set up your match. And it would be cool is if you had your own donate, you had your own match and then we have the same, you would give us a match, right? So then you, you'd be like, it's not a match, it's tripled. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So yeah, that's really super great. Um, um, okay. So, sorry, Sarah, one thing that came over. Mm -hmm. Well, actually not too. So as a DAF, you provide the tax letter. We do not need to worry about that then, correct? Um, we handle all of the, the all of the tax and the receipts and all of that. I would still send, right, whatever you do for donor engagement, right? A thank you email or thank mm -hmm. you, whatever, yeah. Um, yes. Are all organizations eligible for whole campaign matches? Yes, John. 
Uh, yep, that's that's the plan. The goal is to set them up either during certain times or organizations that receive, um, you know, X donations in an hour kind of make them um, random. And so, uh, yes, that they will be available to everybody. Can you share the range of money raised? Um, everywhere from nothing to I think the lead and again, I got to pull that leaderboard. I think the, the organization that made the most money last year was in the 30,000s. Awesome. Alrighty, so I am going to, while we're on matching grants, I'm going to kind of give like a brief kind of overview of where to find it, um, not reports, fundraising tools. Um, so we're going to talk about matching grants. We are going to go into far more detail on the next webinar, including how to secure matching grants, um, but I just want to kind of briefly touch on the capabilities here. So here's your match manager. It'll show you your live matches, upcoming matches that you've queued. If you have any past matches, it'll also show here. Um, to create one, you're just going to click Create. Uh, super easy, super clean, intuitive name of match sponsor. Um, if they want to be anonymous, hidden, they can do that as well. You can add a logo if you have um, Starbucks, whoever <laughs> sponsoring you, you can add their logo here. Um, you can queue your matches to begin one after another. Um, and there's just a bunch of kind of different options here um, on how to set your match. Um, and then, of course, the email will go out to the person who is matching. Um, once the match is fulfilled, they'll get the email and they can fulfill it either online or offline. Totally up to you. Whatever works for your uh, match, matchy, matcher. Um, OK, cool. So I am going to move into settings and general settings. Um, and this, like I said, is just kind of to get you familiar and refresh you on the settings for your page. We're going to go into strategy and kind of more detail on, on a bunch of this stuff at the next webinar. So I'll just keep plugging that next webinar so you all sign up. <laughs> um, OK, so settings, um, ba -ba -bum. settings, we're going to go to general settings. Um, this kind of last, I'll close this so you can have a better view. This last little section uh, on your dashboard has a bunch of different settings. Um, if you click settings, it opens that sub menu. Um, you can update your organization settings. You can customize your URL. You can manage your EFT here. You can update any legal information uh, if needed. You can customize, like I said, your social sharing. Um, and also, uh, like I was showing you, you can add admins. Um, so that they can go in and do whatever they need to do. Um, the last, last thing that I'm going to touch on uh, before kind of switching over to the um, just kind of questions and different resources available to you is the widgets. Um, so under fundraising tools, you'll find your widgets. Um, and your account comes with, I think it's three different widget styles, mini, donate, and thumbnail. Um, and this allows you to collect donations through your, you know, personal company um, uh, organization website. So if you have a tech person for your actual website, you can embed the widget through an iframe. Um, so if someone makes a donation through this widget, that donation will get counted towards your giving day. So if you have supporters who are used to visiting your website to donate, it might be helpful to add a widget to your actual website during the event during the event so you can capture any of those donations just so that those will get counted towards your giving uh, event. Like I said, there's a couple different widgets. The mini donation form is going to reflect, which is my favorite, reflects a mini donate form that shows the different kind of levels that you've set up. We also have the donate button, which is just a donate budget button. Um, and then we, of course, have the thumbnail, which is an icon linking to your San Diego Gives uh, organization profile page. Um, of course, this one I think is the cutest. So, uh, but I'm going to stop screen share now and switch back over to the webinar. Uh, not the webinar, the slides. Um, and if you have any kind of final questions, you can start thinking about <clears throat> those and sending them through. Um, so I just, before we end, because um, we're getting close to three, I just want to make sure to mention all of the tools available to you as you get ready for San Diego Gives. Um, and that is, of course, the nonprofit toolkit and the amazing San Diego Gives University, which I think is just the coolest thing. Um, not every giving a day has that much kind of uh, webinars and office hours. And I just think that's really great that you all put that together, Lauren. Um, but the toolkit and the recorded 
the, I'm sorry, this recorded Mighty Cause training is going to be available in the nonprofit toolkit. I'm going to download all of the webinar slides um, so you can refer to what I was talking about in a visual kind of set of slides. Um, and that'll be available for you. Um, and I'm just going to plug the toolkit. It has super great tips, tricks, support articles, FAQs, walkthroughs, um, just a ton of info to help you get inspired and start thinking about how to promote your campaign. Um, we also have a really great support library through Mighty Cause. Um, so if you have questions or you want to read blog posts about how uh, different fundraising strategies, you can read through those linked in the toolkit as well. Um, and of course, check the offerings on the San Diego Gives University page. There's a lot of, like I said, awesome trainings, um, super helpful office hours you can sign up to attend where Lauren and the San Diego team can help you out with questions, campaign support. Um, and then a uh, final little thing, um, speaking of support, as we wrap, I just want to make sure you have all of our information at Mighty Cause. You have the email, um, and the hours that we're available uh, to contact us, 6 to 2 uh, Pacific. Um, I think that is about it. Oh, I'm going to also do a, a, another plug for the next webinar um, happening June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, it's all about strategy. We're going to discuss the different tools, how to use them for your strategy, how to create mini goals, um, how to do campaign and social media tips, email campaign and social media tips, just to really get the most out of your giving event. Um, and you all have a ton of time to plan. So this is just the, the really great time to have that webinar. Um, all right, I'm going to take a sip of my tea, Lauren, passing yep. it to you. <laughs> okay, there's a few questions. Um, what are some suggestions <clears throat> to re-engage, retain people who donated to the campaign last year? Is there a way to send an email directly through Mighty Cause to those donors? Yes, you can send a, an email directly through there. Um, I, I think it's a good idea to pull it. And if you have an email, um, like if you use MailChimp or something like that, um, because your, your information will be saved, kind of your analytics. So if you do use an email um, provide, what am I saying? Email provider, constant contact, um, you'll have that data. You can still send through Mighty Cause, but I, I do recommend um, being able to kind of track a little bit more um, through your provider. What was the first part of that question? Uh, yeah, you you got it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any tips to retain uh, donors from last year? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, there's a follow-up question about the fee that the 5.4 plus the 30 cents was asking what portion of that was credit card fee, where does it go, and kind of the breakdown of that fee as to who gets what. Mm -hmm. Good question. I would have to pull up, um, and if you want to answer a couple other questions, I can pull up the specific breakdown for it um, for just so I have a minute. Yeah. Um, there is a question about um, does Mighty Cause integrate with Salesforce or get response email? There is, Mighty Cause does, <clears throat> I think you're going to probably talk about this more on the 13th, but there's like a, I don't know what it's called, but it's a fee per month and you get extra mm -hmm. like, uh, text to give and, and, and connection to MailChimp or Salesforce. So there is a way to do that. I've never even heard about get response. Yeah, um, yeah, there is. Um one uh yep so we have the essentials plan which Advanced. is pretty much mm -hmm, um what you get with the giving event um and then we have advanced which offers a bit more kind of uh like deeper kind of analytics uh integrations we use zapier um so you can connect to mailchimp um or a bunch there's like a, a ton of different apps you can use um, so if you are interested and you want to look into that, um, you can go to the Mighty Calls website and see what you get if you sign up for the advanced. Um, you can also email support and let them know uh, our team gives demos. So if you're kind of on the fence about it and you think you just want to have like a quick 20, 30 minute demo, our team can kind of show you the different advanced tools available to you. Um, so that's something you can also think about. Um, there was a message about Facebook and getting an error, and I responded to that just saying that that it's being fixed. That um, because I had the same issue. Yes, yeah, I yeah. Know, days ago for Mighty Cost saying, yeah, your Facebook's not connecting, and uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. I got a response back from support that they're working on that. Um, can the mini donation form be used in email? Um, 
That's a good question. I don't think I've ever used it in email. You could try it. You could paste the little iframe and see if it works. I can try to follow up with that too. Yeah, we can we can set that. There is a an FAQ page on the website um, <laughs> that has general FAQ questions. And then at the very bottom, I started another um, page. So if you click on it, it's all the questions that have come up from people um, like during office hours. And mm -hmm. so uh, I can, we can add that there, Sarah, we can get maybe a little more clarification and, and then add that there. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> there's a question about um, how many pledge, how, sorry, how would pledges or offline gifts work? There's a way in the back and I, I um, in the, right in your page, your organizational page to go in and, and include offline um, mm -hmm. that then, you know, are part of the total number that day. Um, what, what about pledges, Sarah? Um, so when you say pledges, people, um, can you clarify? Yeah. People are I think I was telling you to answer it because I need a clarification. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that like I was like, passing it off to you is my way. Sure thing. Um, um, so during the giving day, you're going to have two options. So we don't really have pledging. We have, you can enter an offline donation um, or you can enter and oh, well, people will donate via online. Um, so it would have to be one of the two. Um, if the person who wrote the question wants to uh, clarify a little more, and just let us know. But as far as that goes, there's online donations uh, made in real time, or there's offline, which you can add. So if someone is doing like, I'll use pledging in the sense of a match. If someone's setting up a match for you and they're pledging money for your match, they're gonna wanna fulfill the match. Um, ideally before the event ends, or um, if it's off offline donation, they can you can backdate the offline check. This is a um, good fault. Follow Jennifer's follow up about how many we have many donors who make pledges and then pay later via donor advice fund or another fund. And that's a really great point. Jennifer, we this year are are including a donor advice option when a donor goes to check out that it'll say, like, are you paying by card, whatever, and then <clears throat> it'll go down to donor advice fund. And we're working with all the donor advice funds here in San Diego. Uh, Sharon at least Chag is really to get them set up as to being able to send that out to their all their donor advice funds on their own, right? To actually like mm -hmm. get out there as a real specific marketing strategy this year. Uh, so yes, I guess that is technically a pledge, but it'll go yes. it'll go in as money received to the your total, and then the system, right, um, Sarah? The system will send an email to whoever whoever is the person at the foundation saying, "Hey, this person wants to make this," you know, and then the foundation will help finish up the rest yep. of the process. Yep, that's exactly it. So yeah. um, you did a great job of explaining it. Um, yeah, so there's a, a place um, when they are filling out their DAF at the checkout, and this is brand new, so thank you for reminding me um, that they can kind of pledge the amount, uh, pay through the DAF. It's really just a, an information collection tool. Um, there's no exchange of funds. That all is going to take place outside of the Mighty Cause platform. Um, so there will be a place for an email address. They can, you'll be notified as the organization that a DAF kind of pledge has come through. So you can follow up directly outside of the platform. Um, and then of course the donor themselves will get an email notification receipts. Um, and then the actual advisor so that everyone can kind of use, uh, everyone to follow up with everyone. <laughs> and like I said, we're really trying to push that this year and really make a concerted effort, like to say there's uh, a DAF that a DAF holder that's really into animals, we, you know, we pull the list of 327 and categorize them by, um, well, pull them by their category. So we can actually send a list of all the animal nonprofits, for example, to a donor advice fund who gives to animals to say, hey, here's, here's who you can give to, um, you know, and or give a, an amount to all of the animal organizations, right, through Impact Cube. So it can, here's five grand to all the animal active, you know, organizations, and then we can get that split. So we're really trying to utilize that opportunity this year. Um, awesome. Two other things real quick, and then we can go back to Deborah's question about the, the percentage. Um, there are two, so I did put in the chat, or yeah, the San Diego Gibbs University link. <clears throat> so if you scroll down, you'll see the June 13th um, webinar that Sarah's talking about, as well as there's two before that. 
well, there's a few before that. There's office hours, um, which is just a really great place if you now like brain dump all the information you just gathered and you still have questions, you can come to office hours to ask those and it's just an in and out opportunity on Zoom. And then we have um, a demo through, with Hands On San Diego about their volunteer platform. There was a question a few weeks ago about could we get volunteers to help us set up our page and help us put a marketing plan together because we're a small nonprofit. And um, <clears throat> And uh, we're like, that's a really great idea. So hands on that is a great idea. has set that up as an opportunity. And if nonprofits want to take advantage, um, they can. Um, so do you have a, a follow up on that question from? Yes, it looks like 2% um, platform plus 2.9 yes. and 30 cents on credit cards. Okay, so if that's the case then because what so last year 2021, we had a higher um, we paid because okay, let me back up. So 2021, we were just starting. So we had no money. So it was like, we're gonna have to max out the platform fee, right? And give and give you less, uh, give the, give Mighty Cause less of a, a flat fee. This year we were able to say like, how much of a flat fee can we give out of our pockets so it doesn't come out of donors pocket. So that 4.9, then need, I need to update that on the website. Um, does the DAF donation have the 5.4 fee deducted by Mighty Cause? Well, that would be, that would depend on if they covered it or not. Um, that's a good question too, because it's a new tool. I may have to follow up with you on that, Lauren. Um, I'm thinking that since it's not an actual payment that's going through our Mighty Cause system, this is all, it's basically a collection right. tool. So it's a pledge. Um, that's all gonna happen outside. So, I mean, I would, I would think no. And then there's another question about what a monthly donor transfer. Okay, wait. Would a monthly donor transfer over to the organization to process their monthly gift? So you're, I think you're saying, would it go, would the monthly donation go to you, whatever your CRM platform is to process it that way? And this is a, if that is how you're asking it, this is a discussion we've had a lot with Mighty Cause is to how to be able to do that. Cause it would stay in Mighty Cause unless you went to that donor and had them move over to your system, which is, it sucks and is work. So we're trying to figure out internally at Mighty Cause how we can not have to do that. Mm -hmm. There's, if Sarah can tell you, there's a list of things. She has a list <laughs> of things right now. We're working hard behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Um, can donors cover the transaction fee? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's when they check out, it says, "Do you want to cover the fee?" And they can click the box. I, it might even be clicked, and they unclick it. I don't know, but it's. Yep, it's um, automatically selected, and they can opt out. Perfect. Alrighty. Any other questions right now? Again, I think for the 100th time, it's. Right, uh, info at San Diego Gives for San Diego Gives specific uh, questions, and then of course support at Mighty Cause. There's a lot of emails I get to info at, and mm -hmm. I apologize, but sometimes I then just say, "Oh, let me get you to support," and then I send them to support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, reoccurring donors will stay in the platform after nine eight. Yes, currently correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I think that's everything. Um, yeah, so hopefully we will see all of you at the next Mighty Cause um, strategy webinar. It's going to be really great. It's just a ton of different email strategy, campaign, um, goal setting, and stuff like that. So come with your questions, um, and we're excited. So thank you, everyone, for joining us for this Getting Started webinar. I'm going to upload the video and the slides to the toolkit um, so you can find them there. So thanks again. Thanks so much, Sarah. I appreciate it. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye, you guys.